Hi, my name is Thierry Gibraltar and in today's video we're going to talk about the XF 35mm f1.4 and make sure you stay until the end of the video because I will share with you a little uh, street photography session that I had uh, in Sasazuka the other day so I will share with you some sample pictures So as you know, if you've been following this channel, uh, I've been doing quite a bit of street photography, right? And the 35 millimeter focal length, uh, which is the 50 uh, millimeter focal length equivalent in the full frame, is a focal length that I really like using. Um, it's, well, it's really close to what I see. It's kind of easy for me to understand how to compose my images, basically. So I use this the 35 mm uh, focal length quite a bit. I used to own the 35 mm f2 and by the way if you haven't seen the review of this lens you can click right here. Uh, this will take you to a quick review of the lens. Uh, and I love this lens. Um, however, um, I found myself wanted a bit more of the lens, right? The length is great, it's compact, but uh, well, it's f2 and if you want to shoot at night, like I do quite a lot here in Tokyo, you're quite limited by, um, well, the aperture, uh, the maximum aperture range, right? So I decided to give a try to the 35mm f1.4, so I bought this um, second hand and gave it a try uh, at the same time as, uh, you, at the same time using the 35mm f2. So this video is basically about what I like about the 35mm f1.4, uh, what I don't like about it, and also a small comparison about the 35mm f2 uh, for my usage, basically. So let's get started. So first, I think we should start with the um, cones of this lens, um, because they're not that many, but Let's get them out of the way, basically. So uh, what I don't like about this lens, uh, number one, I would say, is the um, external focus mechanism. Basically, when you focus, this little uh, part here will go up. I mean, will move, basically, to acquire focus on the subject. Uh, so this, I don't really like. I don't like any external focus mechanism or external zoom mechanism because dust or rain or humidity or whatever can get in that and it can cause some long-term problem to the lens, right? So that is one of the um, characteristics of the lens that I don't like. Number two, well, the noise when you autofocus. If you're looking into using this lens for video and you want to use the audio footage on camera, um, well, basically don't because it's quite noisy uh, when it acquires focus so you should it will make your footage basically unusable so I would not um, actually recommend this lens for video if you're just trying to you know record with sound with your camera just go with the 35 f2 it's way better um, number three well the autofocus is not as fast as the 35 f2 um, but uh, I would not say that I, in my experience in uh, shooting with this lens, I would not say that it was like a deal breaker for me. I could acquire focus most of the time on my subjects and I did not miss any, sh any shot uh, because of the uh, autofocus. It's just a bit slower to acquire focus than the 35mm f2 or other uh, linear motor um, type of lens of the Fuji Fujifilm gun. So that's about it. Oh yeah, maybe one extra point. Um, if you look at the lens cap, that's right here. Um, the usual lens cap that Fuji Fujifilm gives you are basically clipping 
uh, onto your lens. But this one, well, it's just uh, just right here, right? So if you're walking around with this lens cap and I don't know, you hit your bag or whatever on it, it just fall. So this Fujifilm, mm, yeah, not good. So let's see. Uh, Let's see if they can improve that, or maybe there is actually a third party lens cap I need to check actually. Uh, that would be uh, a bit better than this one, but yeah, not a huge fan of that one. All right, so now let's talk about uh, the positive aspects of this lens. And first, I would say that the weight, uh, it's a really compact lens for uh, f1.4, right? Look at this, it's basically, uh, in the palm of my hand, really easy to transport. It fits perfectly on the, the X-T4 and I'm sure on the other more smaller compact um, bodies of Fujifilm, right? There is no, no problem at all with this lens in terms of, well, weight and size. I'm really impressed by how compact it is and by how well it fits. And this is with the lens cap. If you remove it, you have just this small, this smaller body. Like it's, it's really, really small for the capability that you get. So that's great, great point for me. What I like also is, well, it's f1.4, right? You can get quite close to some subject and you can use this particular lens for um, isolating your subject compared to your background. Um, and it makes it great for not only street photography, but environmental portraits or all the kind of photography that you could use it for. And because of that higher uh, maximum aperture compared to the F2 uh, model, you can use it for night photography too. So this is something that I uh, find myself doing quite a bit. And having this F1.4 uh, really is something that I really enjoy with this lens. Okay, so one more argument that I would say in favor of this lens is its price. Uh, so it's relatively cheap for what you get, right? Of course, you don't get weather resistance and you don't get linear motors, but you get a really great build, uh, great quality lens, right? You don't have any problem with it. Clicks perfectly. An aperture of uh, f1.4 maximal, maximum, right? Um, a really sharp lens, great image quality. So only for about $600 at the moment. So I think for this price, uh, honestly, it's worth it. When you compare it to the XF 35 mm F2, which is about $450 at the moment, you add an extra $100, $150, and you get way more light, right? To, to twice the amount of light that you can receive uh, from one to another. Um, I think, yeah, it's great image quality for both of them. Um, I would say that, yeah, it's, it's worth it. It's not overpriced, an overpriced lens, basically. You have a great build quality, great image quality, and uh, a lot more light that can enter your lens. So in conclusion, what I would say is that um, we have two products, right? The F2 and the F1.4. The F2, I would say, if you want a lens uh, dedicated to video, is for me superior to the F1.4. Uh, it also has weather resistance, so if you're into uh, taking pictures or video under the rain, I mean, not crazy rain, pouring rain, but, but um, if you want to have that extra security and that extra, um, I don't know, free your mind of the, the potential risk of, uh, you know, uh, dusk or rain getting into your lens, um, the F2 is for you. Apart from that, uh, if you're looking for a lens to document your everyday life, if you're looking for a lens to, you know, experiment with uh, environmental portraits, street photography or other, I would suggest to go for the 35mm f1.4 because it gives you more capabilities, more potential on the long run, right? As you're evolving, as you're getting better with photography, I think that this lens has less limitation 
and yes maybe it doesn't focus as fast you know you can have detailed reviews on youtube that will tell you the exact um the exact percentage of um focusing speed etc but for me it is not uh, a big issue i never missed a shot in the time that i've used this lens um, because of its autofocus speed I think it's also important to talk about uh, some rumors right now. Um, so according to Fuji rumor, rumors, um, Fujifilm is supposed to release in 2021 an XF 33mm f1.4 RWR. So well, this rumor hasn't been confirmed yet, but uh, I'll definitely be uh, looking into that one because um, having the weather resistance for me is actually something that I'm really interested in. So having a 33 millimeter, so I don't, I need to, I need to check. I'm not sure if two millimeter from 35 to 33 is gonna change much um, uh, in terms of composition. Yeah, having the, the weather resistance uh, for um, this particular focal, focal length uh, would be for me uh, quite interesting. So I'll be definitely, uh, if it ever comes out, I'll, be, I'll definitely be testing this lens and uh, yeah, I'll let you know in the future. So um, if you want to know more about this, check out Fuji Rumors uh, and you, you can check out also the, um, you can expect uh, more on this channel about this uh, particular potential future lens. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed this review and if you enjoyed the review, consider to uh, leave a like uh, comment and subscribe to the channel and also comment if you have any question about the lens uh, that I did not cover today uh, I'll be I'll be make sure I'll make sure to 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 reply to the comments and give you my uh, my answer about any potential question that you have and before you leave I'll leave you uh, with some uh, footage of the street photography session that I had in Sasazuka uh, a few days back so I'll see you in the next video and Bye.